In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an ant nest, or, as it's properly known, a formicarium, for two of my newest ant colonies. My mesobarbarous colony, whose queen is still in the founding stage, but I'm preparing to move them out of a simple test tube setup once the first workers are closed. And another, slightly larger nest for my Fadoli colony, who have around 15 workers with plenty more on the way. For this project, I'm going to be utilising a material known as AAC, or Whitong, which can be found in most DIY stores and is very cost effective. I'm starting up by just cutting two small panes of glass from a picture frame, using a glass cutter. It's important to cut your glass to a suitable size for your colony, as it determines how much nest space you can give them. However, you could skip the glass cutter if you can find glass small enough for your colony, or for larger colonies by utilising the entire frame. Once the glass is cut to size, I like to sand it down to smooth out the rough edges and to get rid of any sharpness. I, need, I needed to cut my AAC in half and I find that the best tool is a simple handsaw. When cutting it's important, but not vital, to try and cut as vertical as possible as it makes the final product look even better. So, take your time and don't rush it. Before we can start carving, we need to create some boundaries so we know where the glass is. Simply trace out the glass onto the block, then create borders inside, between half and a centimetre thick. This creates a safe zone so you don't accidentally carve greater than the size of your glass. After drawing the nest out on some paper and cutting it out, I place them onto the AAC and trace them out inside the safe zones. I place them onto the AAC and trace them out inside the safe zones. Here you can see my initial design for the larger nest, but after tracing it out I decided I wasn't really happy about it and this is what I really love about AC. You can easily sand down your previous design and sketch a new one up. I opted for one with longer tunnels and chambers, much better looking I think. Now, I spent the next good while carving out my design, playing around with the depths and angles of the walls. However, you need to carefully consider the size of your tunnels and make sure that the largest ant, usually the queen, can fit comfortably. It's important to take extra care when carving near thin walls, as applying too much pressure could easily cause them to crack, ruining your designs. An important thing to add is one or more, depending on your nest side, separated chambers that water can be injected into and so provide much needed humidity for your ants to thrive.
After having carved everything out, I sanded down all the edges and interior to create a more refined and finished look. Now to create entrances, I drilled two holes in each nest, one to allow for a water tube and one to connect to an outworld. However this could be done with a screwdriver but I decided to use a drill as it's much quicker and cleaner. With a screwdriver it would just take a little longer. I also used a screwdriver, a much smaller one to add a way to inject water into the pockets. Then I painted both nests. I find using either natural clay paints or dilute acrylic paints work best. Not only do they make the nest look much nicer, but they also help maintain humidity levels in the nest, providing a perfect environment for your colonies. I like to, in I like to keep the interiors unpainted though, as I really like the contrast of the white AAC against the ants. As Outworlds, I'm just using food containers from a supermarket. To provide enough ventilation in them, I'm just drilling a lots of fine holes in the lid. And, to connect to the nest, I'm drilling two more larger holes in the back, keeping one for future expansion, and one to connect to the nest. To drill these, I find it helps to go slow using a drill, as to not add any extra pressure, and using only the weight of the drill, as this can easily crack the acrylic. Connecting the two up with tubes is very easy, using hot water to soften them and then gently squeeze them in and plugging the ends with cotton wool. For some final touch-ups, I'm just cutting up some sponges to fill the watering pockets, which I find helps keep the humidity levels higher for much longer. It's good to clean the glass before it's in place, as once it is, 
then it's very difficult to remove any specks of dust or junk. To attach the glass, you could use something more permanent like hot glue or super glue or silicon. But so that I can easily remove it in the future, I'm just using some blue tack, rolling it out to create tubes that will line the edges and then trimming it so it fits perfectly. I'm giving this fade only colony a welcome gift in the form of a cut up superworm. Just look how they swarm it once one worker finds it and returns to the nest to let the others know using pheromones. I can't wait until this colony starts producing majors. As for some other ideas, here's two other nests I've made using AAC. This one for my fire ants, standing vertically with columns and tunnels in between chambers. And an extra large watering spot for this humidity loving species. And this all in one nest for my silky ants, or as they're formerly known, Formica fusca. This colony in particular has around 16 queens, but no brood. This isn't unusual in fusca colonies, as if conditions aren't ideal, the queens may not lay for months at a time. That's all for now, and if you have any questions at all, just let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to respond to as many of them as I can. So, thanks for tuning in, and please consider subscribing.